October 30th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Ezekiel chapters 13 and 14 from the Old Testament Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel, who are now prophesying. Say to the prophets who prophesy from their imagination, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit, but have seen nothing. Your prophets have become like jackals among the ruins, O Israel. You have not gone up in the breaks in the wall, nor repaired a wall for the house of Israel, that it would stand strong in the battle on the day of the Lord. They see delusion, and their omens are a lie. They say, The Lord declares, though the Lord has not sent them, yet they expect their word to be confirmed. Have you not seen a false vision and announced a lying omen when you say, The Lord declares, although I myself never spoke? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because you have spoken false words and forecast delusion, look, I am against you, declares the Sovereign Lord. My hand will be against the prophets who see delusion and announce lying omens. They will not be included in the council of my people, nor be written in the registry of the house of Israel, nor enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Sovereign Lord. This is because they have led my people astray, saying, All is well, when things are not well. When anyone builds a wall without mortar, they coat it with whitewash. Tell the ones who coat it with whitewash that it will fall. When there is a deluge of rain, hailstones will fall and a violent wind will break out. When the wall has collapsed, people will ask you, Where is the whitewash you coated it with? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, In my rage I will make a violent wind break out. In my anger there will be a deluge of rain and hailstones in destructive fury. I will break down the wall you coated with whitewash and knock it to the ground so that its foundation is exposed. When it falls you will be destroyed beneath it, and you will know that I am the Lord." I will vent my rage against the wall and against those who coated it with whitewash. Then I will say to you, the wall is no more and those who whitewashed it are no more. Those prophets of Israel who would prophesy about Jerusalem and would see visions of peace for it when there was no peace, declares the Sovereign Lord. As for you, son of man, turn toward the daughters of your people who are prophesying from their imagination prophesy against them and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to those who sew bands on all their wrists and make headbands for heads of every size to entrap people's lives. Will you entrap my people's lives, yet preserve your own lives? You have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley and scraps of bread. You have put to death people who should not die and kept alive those who should not live by your lies to my people who listen to lies. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take note that I am against your wristbands with which you entrap people's lives like birds. I will tear them from your arms and will release the people's lives which you hunt like birds. I will tear off your headbands and rescue my people from your power. They will no longer be prey in your hands. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is because you have disheartened the righteous person with lies, although I have not grieved him, and because you have encouraged the wicked person not to turn from his evil conduct and preserve his life. Therefore you will no longer see false visions and practice divination. I will rescue my people from your power, and you will know that I am the Lord. Then some men from Israel's elders came to me and sat down in front of me. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, these men have erected their idols in their hearts and placed the obstacle leading to their iniquity right before their faces. Should I really allow them to seek me? Therefore speak to them and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When anyone from the house of Israel erects his idols in his heart, 
and sets the obstacle leading to his iniquity before his face, and then consults a prophet, I, the Lord, am determined to answer him personally according to the enormity of his idolatry. I will do this in order to capture the hearts of the house of Israel, who have alienated themselves from me on account of all their idols. Therefore say to the house of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Return. Turn from your idols and turn your faces away from your abominations. For when anyone from the house of Israel, or the foreigner who lives in Israel, separates himself from me and erects his idols in his heart, and sets the obstacles leading to his iniquity before his face, and then consults a prophet to seek something from me, I, the Lord, am determined to answer him personally. I will set my face against that person and will make him an object lesson and a byword, and will cut him off from among my people. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for the prophet, if he is made a fool by being deceived into speaking a prophetic word, I, the Lord, have made a fool of that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. They will bear their punishment. The punishment of the one who sought an oracle will be the same as the punishment of the prophet who gave it, so that the house of Israel will no longer go astray from me, nor continue to defile themselves by all their sins. They will be my people, and I will be their God, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, suppose a country sins against me by being unfaithful and I stretch out my hand against it, cut off its bread supply, cause a famine to come on it, and kill both people and animals. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would save only their own lives by their righteousness, declares the Sovereign Lord. Suppose I were to send wild animals through the land and kill its children leaving it desolate without travelers due to the wild animals. Even if these three men were in it, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They would save only their own lives, and the land would become desolate. Or suppose I were to bring a sword against that land and say, Let a sword pass through the land, and I were to kill both people and animals. Even if these three men were in it, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, they could not save their own sons or daughters. They would save only their own lives. Or suppose I were to send a plague into that land and pour out my rage on it with bloodshed, killing both people and animals. Even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, they could not save their own son or daughter. They would save only their own lives by their righteousness. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. How much worse will it be when I send my four terrible judgments, sword, famine, wild animals, and plague to Jerusalem to kill both people and animals. Yet some survivors will be left in it, sons and daughters who will be brought out. They will come out to you, and when you see their behavior and their deeds, you will be consoled about the catastrophe I have brought on Jerusalem, for everything I brought on it. They will console you when you see their behavior and their deeds, because you will know that it was not without reason that I have done everything which I have done in it, declares the Sovereign Lord. God, I met a person who was Mormon. And upon talking to them about their religion, which as a, a child in junior high and high school, I studied Mormonism endlessly, not to become one, but because I happen to live in Utah and was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, I know a lot about the Mormon religion or cult, as some people will say. Uh, and so in talking to them about what they believed, they seem to be a little bit vague about it. So I asked her, I said, so why do you believe that you are saved by what you do here on earth, 
rather than by Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. And she says, I don't believe that. Okay, I said, <laughs> what about uh, the fact that um, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit aren't the Trinity, they're not three in one, that you guys believe they're all three separate, and that, that Jesus was a human human, not the Son of, of God. And she says, I don't believe that. Okay, what, <laughs> what about when you die... And if you're a man in the Mormon religion, a good standing Mormon male, that you get your own planet and you get to eternally populate that planet. She says, I certainly don't believe in that. So here's a person that has been a Mormon for, gosh, over 10 years at that point, who didn't know what her church that she followed supposedly was teaching her now I don't I honestly don't know because I don't know her well enough I don't know if if it was her fault for not seeking the information and figuring out what it was that she was following um, or if it was the church's information but if you are a Mormon the basic belief systems are all those things that I kind of covered same thing if you're going to be in a Catholic church there's certain things they believe Lutherans um, Protestants, and it depends, sadly, on which type of church you go to. There's a couple different versions of Lutheran churches, a couple different versions of Protestant churches. In fact, the Protestant church is falling apart right now because they're arguing within themselves about creating another division of Protestant churches for people who believe something else. So all these churches, including the church I go to, which is non-denominational, um, all believe a little bit different things some of them believe a little bit different things christian wise some of them don't believe on in in the basic christian doctrine such as you're saved by works uh here on earth uh, rather than god's grace through the sacrifice of his son so Ezekiel is, is having this conversation with you about this and you're telling him, look, the people who are saying these things are in trouble, but I'm also being really clear that you don't get off just because you're following them and you didn't know. You can't use that excuse. You are going to be receiving the same punishment as these people who are lying. If you're following them, you're going to receive that same punishment. And I think about some of the so-called, you can tell I'm kind of on my soapbox lately, uh, the so-called uh, mega churches that preach prosperity doctrines, which is not found anywhere in the Bible, and then some. And I really take horrendous issue at the pastors who are preaching that and living a lifestyle of fancy cars and big houses and, and helicopters to and from their different uh, church locations. I really take offense at that. But what I'm really concerned about is all of these people that are following them. I was talking to a friend of mine who goes to the church of one of these mega churches down in, in Texas. And I asked him why. Uh, not to start an argument, but I was just curious why. He says, well, he's a really good motivator. Like he has really positive things to say. And I never leave church feeling bad about myself. Ah, so we're back to what Ezekiel and you were talking about, about the whitewashing, right? What does that whitewashing look like? Well, I used to attend a church where the pastor was starting to head in that direction. That it's self-empowerment is what, it, what it's all about. And like many of these mega churches preach. And it was fascinating watching him, especially looking back and getting to see what he was doing. It was amazing how they could take little tiny pieces of the Bible, totally out of context, piece them together and make it sound really good. And the really good part, sadly, was appealing to our own ego. Who wouldn't want to feel better about themselves? Who wouldn't want to think that God's blessing you through uh, financial means? And I'm not saying you can't do that, obviously, but not in the way that they were teaching. 
Um, who wouldn't want to believe that they should get the American dream because they're Christian and they deserve it? I mean, all these things, how they put it, just really, truly appealed to all of the evil parts of the world. The, the ego, the financial, the American dream. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine um, who's kind of in that in that trap right now and he says I, I want the fancy car and the big house and the smoking hot wife and the job that pays me a lot of money and I want to be a Christian <laughs> and I'm like okay well God can give you those things but you have to make sure one that God's giving them to you and then you have to reconcile what that looks like in your life so that everything is to God's glory I think the religion of this world, the fame, the money, the ego, the titles, the the brands, that those all become our prophets. And we very much are a willing congregation that goes a- along with what they are offering, almost without thinking about it. You know, we sit in front of the TV and watch things without even thinking about it. Um, we go to the movies and, and sit there for two hours while... Um, things are fed into our hearts, uh, inappropriate scenes, in, inappropriate language, inappropriate situations. Um, again, it's so easy to whitewash everything, to appeal to our sense of entitlement, to appeal to our sense of ego, to appeal to our sense of wanting it all while we're here on earth. And God, I would say it's a just punishment not only to punish the person saying these words, but obviously the people following along with them. But I also know it's so incredibly hard. I watch my kids I work with at the church. The, the world as a religion is so powerful in their lives. It's not like back in the olden days where you had to go to a temple to find other religions and to find idols or to go someplace to buy idols. And it's not even just that the whole culture has become a group of idols. I would say, you know, watching people's lives nowadays, that it's not even whitewashed. It's completely saturated in every single thing that comes in in contact with us in in books, in TVs and movies, um, newspapers, Internet, conversations we have with people at work, uh, billboards driving to and from work, what's on the radio station. It's just... The saturation is all over. Um, what people wear, what people don't wear, what they drive, uh, the titles that they announce to each other when you say, what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I'm CEO of such and such. <laughs> it's not even whitewashed anymore, God. It's just pure saturation. So God, I just, first and foremost, I want to thank you for the church I go to. Um, I have, I have a couple of pastors there that are just such amazing men of God. They lead by example. They preach from the Bible instead of from themselves. It's not about them. It's truly about your word. Uh, they're incredibly passionate about your word and making sure people understand the truth uh, therein. They as- associate and our church associates with other people who have that same goal in mind. And to me, it's just this amazing place where I get to learn about you. I get to worship you. I get to be with other people who who are headed down that same path. In that same sense, God, I just pray for everyone who doesn't have a church like that. That one, that they would find a church like that, but two, in the meantime, for them not to follow some pastor just because it sounds really good and makes them feel really good every Sunday when they show up at church. Have them be intentional about their relationship with you, God. Have them be very clear about every single aspect of it. God, I I hurt so much watching these thousands upon tens of thousands of people in these mega churches following someone who isn't speaking your word, who isn't speaking the truth, who is talking about a worldly religion and it's clothed very thinly in tiny little Bible verses handpicked from from the from your word. God, I just ask that the truth just come into their hearts and into their minds. And you strengthen them to leave those churches and find biblically based churches that pursue you, that pursue your will, that pursue what you expect us to do here on this planet. 
not just people show up on on Sunday and have surface relationships with you but passionate people who are in radically changed relationships with you with amazing new hearts that you strengthen and guide and protect and discipline and show grace and mercy to God I know that those relationships are messy but there's nothing more that I want in this world than to follow you and to be surrounded by people who can teach me the truth of what your word says. God, continue to protect and guide those people who speak truth into my life and into the lives of many people around the world. In your son's name I pray. Amen.